Welcome to this new video in which we're going to look at how to solve a sandwich Sudoku. Now we're going to start with a 6x6 six six sandwich Sudoku. So you must place the numbers from 1 to 6 once in each row, in each column, and each 3x2 three box of the grid. And numbers around the edge of the grid tell you the sum of the numbers placed between 1 and 6 in that row or column. So let's have a look. Okay, so a good place to start is to mark in the squares that can contain the 1 and 6 in each region. Um, and I'm going to use the colour red to mark squares that can't contain a 1 or a 6. Now if we look at this column, the third column, we have the 1 already. So we just need to place the 6. And we have a total of 4 outside the grid. The only way to make a 4 is the single digit 4. You can't have 2 plus 2 because obviously that then repeats a 2 within the column. So therefore it must be 1, 4, 6 there, or 1, 4, 6 here. So that means that this square can't contain the 6, and neither can these other two squares in the column. So we've marked them red. So this is a 4, this is a 4, and either this or this is the 6, and this square is too far away. Next I'm going to look at this row here, row 4, where the total is 0. Now we know therefore that the 1 and 6 must be adjacent to each other, but if we look at these two squares, we already have a 1 in the box, so therefore this can't be both 1 and 6 because then we be repeating the 1. So we can mark these two squares as red. And since we have a given 2 here, then we know that the 1 and the 6 have to go in these final two squares. I've marked the pencil marks in. Now looking at the row above it, if this is 1 and 6, or this is 1 and 6, then clearly none of these squares can contain 1 or 6. And since we have the total of 2 outside the grid here, then we can actually place 1, 2, and 6. Now looking at the first column, we have a repeat of the 4 total. So we can use the same logic now we have the 6 here. This must be a 4, or this must be a 4, and therefore the 1 can only go here or here. So we can mark these squares in red. So we know that this is a 4, this is a 4, and therefore the 1 is here or here, depending on whether this square or this square is the 4. Now we've made this square red. Let's have a look at this 9 total. Okay, so 9 can be made 5, 4, or it could be 2, 3, 4. So it contains 2 or 3 squares in a sandwich, which means that these squares must be at least 3 apart. Now this square here only has a white square 2 away from it, and it needs to have one at least 3 away from it, even if it was 5 and 4. So therefore, this must be red. Because again, if this was 1, then if it was 5, 4, that would have to be a 6, or vice versa, but it can't be. Because it's already marked red. And over here, if we had 5, 4 here, then we'd be placing the 1 or 6 outside of the grid. Now in this column, we have a 0 total again. And we can use the same logic as we did earlier on, to say that the squares must be next to each other. There's only one pair of three white squares in the column, which is these two here. So we can mark the 1 and the 6 there, and a 1 and the 6 here. Therefore we know that these four squares cannot contain 1 or 6. We can also mark this square in red. And okay, now let's look at this top row with a total of 6. Now that must be 2 and 4, because we can't have 3 and 3, because that would be repeating the number 3. So can the 1 go here? Well, if this was a 1, then we'd need 4, 2, 6. But this can't be a 6, because we marked the square red. So that means that this square can't contain the 1. 
and therefore we can place a 1 down here, and that then resolves our 6 and our 1 here, and these two squares can be marked in red. Now we can see there's only one square left in this 3x2 box that can contain a 6, so we can place that there. Now we can put the 4 into this square, because we know the total between the 1 and the 6 is a 4. We know that these must be the 1 and 6 in some order, because that's the only place for them. Now if we look at this sum of 11, we have the 6 here, and so this must be made from these 3 squares, because that's the only way to get the 11, so the 1 goes here, and this must be 11 minus 2 is 9, so it must be 5 and 4, and since we have the 4 here, they must go this way round, and this must be a 3. Next we can place some numbers using standard Stoku rules. So clearly there's only one square left unplaced in this 3x2 box. So that must be a 3. Now looking in this column, the 3 can't go here or here. So that must go there. Which leaves us 2 and 5 for these two squares. Now let's place our 4 here between the 1 and the 6 to obey the sandwich total. Now we have a 6 as the total in row 1. Now clearly the 1 can't go here. And where else can it go? Can it go here? Well no, because then it would have to be 6, 6, 1, which of course is against the rules. So our 1 must go in this square. And that's nice because that enables us to resolve the 6 and the 1 in these two squares. And clearly now this cannot contain 1 or 6. That now only gives us one square left, that's white, in row 2. So we place the 6 there, it's the only option. And now we have all of our 1 and 6s placed in the grid. Now we can use some of the information from our sandwich totals to resolve some more squares. So we know between the 6 and the 1, we have a total of 9. And therefore with the 4, this must be a 5. Now if we look at this column, we've got 4 and 3 left to place. There's a 3 here, so that must go this way round. In this column, between the 6 and the 1, we have to have a total of 5, which clearly in one square must be 5 itself. And we can place a 4 here to resolve this 3 by 2 box. Now with this 7 total, we have 4 plus 3. And then there's again one value left here, which must be a 2. And now it looks like we're finishing off. So to complete this row, we need a 5, a 2. To complete this row, over here, the only option left is a 3, because we've got 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Which means that we can place a 4 here. Now we have the 2 and the 5s to put in. So this 6 here is going to help us do that, because we know the total between the 6 and the 1 sums to 6. We have a 4, so that must be 2. That gives us a 5 here, and then we can finish off the row with a 5, and the entire grid with a 2. Let's check that. OK, and that's how to solve Sandwich Sudoku. If you enjoyed this puzzle, we have lots more Sandwich Sudokus to play on our website, with a new puzzle every single day. Um, so check them out. Thank you.